So you want to learn how to work with multiplayer super easy and really fast to get started? Well, Coherent Multiplayer is a really good option for you, and luckily for me and you, they've sponsored this video. More about Coherent in the end of the video, but this is actually what we're going to be making today. I'm going to start out with a demo project that is completely single player and turn it into multiplayer without even using any code. And as you can see, the wheels are turning, the skid marks are networked, the positions are networked, the rotation and everything works super well. So let's get right into the video. So first things first, we need to set up Coherence. Now, everything that I'm referencing here I will link to in the description on the uh, how to install coherence guide but what you basically got to do is we go to edit to project settings in the name we write coherence URL we enter this URL here and in the scope we write io.coherence.sdk I'm just gonna copy paste it to make sure everything is right these packages say I understand and click save next thing now is to go to window and package manager in here we will find the my registries and in here you will see coherence so you can just go ahead and press install now here on this welcome screen i'm just going to click on open coherence hub to get started and i'm just going to put coherence hub over here so we can use it for later but now i'm going to import a package from the unity asset store which holds a whole game because i've seen a lot of people wanting to port games existing games into multiplayer so i'm going to show you how to do that really easily without any even requiring any network code so now we're in this prometheus scene which is basically just a car game so let me go ahead and boot that up and show you what that looks like right now so as you can see here we can drive the car around and we can also do drift with it so first let me just modify the car to make it a little bit faster that just makes it more fun and now let's go ahead with the multiplayer setup so if we go to the coherence hub and under the scene tab we can start adding these things. So first off, we need a mono bridge. Mono bridge is just part of the necessary networking setup. The next thing we need is a live quarry to the scene. Now the live quarry is basically uh, the radius that you want to network. So as you can see, as we increase this radius, you'll see this cube start showing up. This is basically everything inside this cube is being networked. And if it's not inside this cube, it's not being networked. You can add multiple quarries, but for this case, I'm just gonna pump the radius up to 80 because that perfectly encapsulates this box that we're in here. Now let me go back to the scene here and we can also add a simple sample connect dialog and you see this looks like this so now in order to test off and stuff we can actually disable the dialog again but before we build and test we'll need to re-enable it so this is the essentials of the networking setup now the next thing that we have to do is we need to set up this player object or the car in this case or multiplayer so first off let me just unpack it from its existing prefab because i want to make a new prefab now what you need to do here is you need to add the coherence sync component and as you can see as we do that it will say that we have the ability to convert to a new prefab in resources or a new prefab in assets or convert to a new prefab in something custom now i'm going to add it to a new prefab in resources since that works really well with coherence this is what i just recommend for an easy setup now you can see it's in the resources folder now every time that we make changes to this car especially networking wise it's really important that we do it from this main prefab and not out here in the scene so now a few things that we want to do first of all you can see here it says load via if that's not automatically set we want to set it to load via resources in this case because it's inside the resources folder that we stored it next thing that we want to do is actually click this configure button this will open up the configurator and we can also just store this up here that's how i like to do it and now we've got to think about what do we want to share with other users now of course we want to network the position but we also want to network the rotation of the object since the car is going to also turn around and stuff. now another thing that's really important is we need to disable the script for anyone who's not the owner of it just like in any multiplayer system you can be the owner of your own player and if you're not the owner of it well we want to disable it so you cannot control each other so what we want to do is first of all since it's a physics object we want to set it for a kinematic for anyone who is not you so that they don't apply physics to your object and we also want to disable the controller script this can be also be your player controller in most cases for like a first or a third person game we want it disabled for anyone who's not you because then only you can control the object so just before that we go ahead and build the game you need to go to coherence and run the bake functionality this will basically make all the single player scripts turn into multiplayer scripts automatically by the use of coherence another thing that we need to do before building is actually in the player settings it's important that we set run in background on now we can go ahead and build the game and test it out
now that the game is built we can actually go ahead and set it to play one in the built version and one in the inspector one in the unity editor but what we need to go to do first is we need to start up a server and we can just run a test server so if we go to coherent local server and run local room server you can see now the server is set up so if we go ahead and play you can see that we're now connected to the local region we can now create a room and join that and as you can see i can drive around and over here if i press refresh you can see i have now joined the local region and i can see the room that has been created and you can see now this is actually just networked and also now we can drive around have fun together and you can see everything about that just works perfectly fine now you'll notice one thing is that something like the skid marks and the wheels turning is actually not networked so you see if i make skid marks up here we can't see it on this other screen so networking custom functionality like this is super easy using coherence and that's what i'm going to show you now so in order to do this first of all we're going to open up our prefab and then we're going to think about what is it that we are wanting to network. So in case of these skid marks, I know that what we want to network is this emitting under the tire skids, the left and the right tire skid. It is this emitting functionality here that we want to network. So all we do is we select the one that we want to network, go to the configuration and to the variables tab. And here you can see that we have the emitting ball. And if I just press this, well, now it's networked. So I can just enable both of these and now they're networked. It's really as simple as that. And now with the wheels, we can actually do the same thing. We want to network the rotation. Now, one thing that's important about fast moving, especially rotating objects like this, is that coherence uses interpolation by default. Interpolation is super good and useful to keep everything smooth. The issue is that if it tries to smooth something over time that's rotating super fast, it's going to end up looking a bit weird. So in my case, I actually want to disable the interpolation or you can make your own custom interpolation. But for this case, I'm going to disable it. And I'm going to do this for both wheels. Now that that's done, we can go ahead, click bake, build it again and test it once again. Now, just like last time, I'm going to open up a local server, I'm going to the build this time and create a room. I'm going to create the room, join it, I'm going to the inspector, starting, joining the room. And now you can see that we've joined. And now in order to test the skid marks, you can also see that now the wheels are actually turning on the other screen and as well the skid marks are being networked. And it's really as simple as that to convert a networking script. I didn't even need any code. This just works and look at how extremely smooth this is. Coherence also has a really scalable pricing model and they can actually run all of the servers for you, which is extremely useful. It's very easy to work with. They have really good prices and it's honestly just a really good product. I know at this point that I've been making videos on both Fishnet, Alteruna and Coherence. And to be honest, I can't tell you which one is better. They're all for individual use cases. Coherence, I must say, is absolutely the easiest one to get started with. And I can greatly recommend you getting into this if you're new to multiplayer. If you're an expert to multiplayer looking for a new system, they are really lightweight. They have some strong servers and a lot of functionality behind the scenes that you can modify yourself to get full control. So overall, I'd say from start to finish, it's a really good tool. And I would greatly recommend you go check them out. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video and this was helpful to you, please do leave a like and a comment and consider subscribing. And please do go check out Coherence. First of all, they're super cool for even sponsoring me. And also, I think it's honestly a really great tool for people who are both new and experts at multiplayer because they do have some really crazy functionality.